Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I want to show you my YouTube channel count display, which is a little internet connected device that I've got, I've, I've built, and has been sitting out in my apartment for a few days now. The construction of it is actually relatively simple. It's merely two modules, one being the Adafruit Huzzah, which is a breakout board for the ESP12 carrier. Right, so we've got an ESP8266 chip in here, which is a processor plus Wi-Fi transceiver. And the ESP12 is this little black module, which comes as a castellated board, right? Kind of inconvenient to work with unless you've got a custom PCB. And so Adafruit sells this blue module, which is the ESP12 soldered onto it with some of the support circuitry. And then they give you the headers so that you can um, have two rows of headers like that mounted. So you can plug into a breadboard, and it's got an FTDI six-pin serial um, header here for programming, right? And so to program this, all you do is you hold down the GPIO zero button, press the reset button, it resets in program mode, and then you can flash over the serial port, even using like the Adafruit API, right? And so I was playing with this. And Becky Stern made a super awesome video where she made a shadow box YouTube subscriber counter, um, which she was using the Feather platform, which is you know another ESP8266, I believe, on a different carrier board thing that Adafruit then sells um, plug-in modules for, including a four-digit display, right? And so building a four-digit internet-connected counter display was super easy. Um, and she did a fantastic job and a much better job than me packaging it. Um, but I wanted to do something a little bit more than four digits. Um, and so I was browsing around on eBay and I found these modules. This was, it was something like $2, which is crazy because it has two four digit eight segment LED displays. You've got a PCB and then they claim that this is a max maximum 7219 integrated circuit on the back. It's, I, I mean, I, I'm going to hazard a guess here that this is probably counterfeit silicon because in volume pricing, the 7219 costs more than both seven segment displays, the PCB and the integrated circuit and it being soldered and it having a header on it and it getting shipped to me. Um, I mean, something's not right here, but it's one of those things that since I can't source any one of the three components here, IC, board, or display for less than the total cost of the module, I may as well design projects around the whole module, right? And so that's something to consider. And for this project, all I did was I soldered the Huzzah to the back of just a piece of FR4 proto board. I put a few jumper wires, you know, power ground, and then three of the I.O. pins, I think I used like 12 through 14, uh, bring them out to the power ground, chip select, data in, and clock on here. This is kind of a proto one-way SPI bus, and what's kind of neat is you can actually chain these modules. Is it's It's got a 16-bit shift register in it, so if you shift 16 bits of data in, it then starts coming out the other end. So you can actually chain a whole bunch of these displays together. So that's what it is on the hardware side. On the software side, I pretty much just took Becky's, um, Becky took the YouTube API, there's a YouTube API library. So she, she took that library and changed it just enough for the module she was using. And I pretty much went the same route of I took the YouTube API demo and dropped in my apartment's Wi-Fi password, my personal YouTube channel ID, and my uh, Google API key so that it can make queries against my channel. And then I just have it wrote a real basic driver to talk to the 7219 um, to shift in not my subscriber count, but my actual channel views. So if I sit here, and at this point, we're just using the FTDI for power. So if we power this up, uh, it first powers up in this little help message, um, which is just saying that it isn't able to reach the internet, which is in this case, just because it hadn't yet connected to my Wi-Fi, And then it actually updates the display with the, my view count. 
Um, so you can see I've got 1.17 million YouTube views across all of my videos on my channel, which is just crazy. Like, so thanks guys for that, I guess. Um, but the, the kind of the neat part is that in the decode mode, really? Come on. Oh, that's didn't quite boot up. There we go. Um, in the decode mode, uh, the 7219 supports H, E, L, and P as uh, essentially 10, 11, 12, and 13. And then between, yeah, between 10 and 14, it has the dash and those four letters, um, which is kind of cute. And so I figured I may as well monopolize on that. But you can actually take the 7219 and put it in non-decode mode where it gives you raw access to all seven segments of the display so you could actually spell anything that you wanted that you are able to in, um, you know, as much that you were able to spell in seven segment displays. But other than that, I think the only other major change I made was that I only have it query every five minutes. When it, when it successfully downloads the API, I then have it essentially just wait five minutes until it tries again. Um, because it seems like these aggregate channel total numbers are only updated about once a day. Um, and so it's, I like the, the YouTube API demo, and I think Becky's also would hit it about once every minute, which um, I don't think was of much value here. And so, you know, why, why even bother? Um, so every five minutes it tries to, it checks to see if there's a new number and it writes it out. But, but yeah, so every day it's kind of a nice little thing. I can walk by my uh, front door and on the way out to work, I can see how many, view, how many views I've gotten. So thanks for watching. And uh, the fact that you are seeing this means that that number is now one bigger. And um, I really appreciate that. Thanks, guys.